If you own or plan to purchase a 1995 to 1999 Mercedes E300 diesel, this is a video alert. I want to talk specifically about the glow plugs in these engines. They're quite different from the glow plugs in the earlier diesel engines like the OM617, OM602, 603, etc. So what I've got what I've got here on the on the bench here is a set of the glow plugs and a custom reamer, carved reamer that we make right here in our own shop and a little tube of this which I'll explain later. But I've <laughs> I've run across this a couple times. I've heard of other reports of this happening. So I think it's, it's probably frequently happening enough that you need to be aware about it. And that's the glow plug seizing in the cylinder head. I have a friend here locally who owned one of these and uh, the glow plug broke off, <laughs> broke off, stuck in the head. And he found out it was gonna be so expensive to fix it that for the next couple of years, he just drove it on five glow plugs, okay? It would start, went, run kind of rough. Uh, that's not ideal, but the better option is to prevent this from happening. And the best way to prevent that is to not leave the glow plugs in for indefinitely for years and years and years. And also, when you do install them, to install them properly. So let me, let me explain some of the key things that you can do to prevent this from happening to your E300D. This is the glow plug that was used in Mercedes diesels from 1980 up through 1993. And notice how short it is compared to the ones that are right here. Now, up until 1985, these on the OM616 and OM617 engines, these were installed into a cast iron head. So you had, you had a steel casting going into an iron cylinder head. And I've heard of them breaking off in OM617 engines, but that is really, really rare, and it's probably due to abuse. I do recommend a light coating of anti-seize when installing these and even the older engines, but it doesn't seem to be as critical. So let's now compare that to one of, of the glow plugs that were installed initially in the 1995 W124 E300D six cylinder. This was a new design on the engine. And notice how they lengthen out the glow plug. So it really takes a long reach down into the pre-chamber. Has a, you know, very similar threads and this is where it seats inside the head down here. Now the problem with these glow plugs, I think is twofold because these glow plugs in the you know, later uh, 80s and early 90s, they also went into aluminum heads. And anytime you put a steel glow plug into aluminum head, I highly recommend you use you know, anesthes. But you know, that doesn't seem to be the problem in those engines. It's all in these, these newer engines that use these style of glow plugs. So I think the problem is, partly the length and also the issue with it uh, steel going into aluminum. So that's where you have to be really careful. If they're over tightened and they're in there a long time, they can seize and when you try to turn them out, they break off. <laughs> and then you have what we call around here a really big wrench dance. The other thing that's critical when you're changing these glow plugs is down in the pre-chamber, carbon will build up around the tip of the glow plug. And I've seen it so bad where the carbon is actually touching right in here. So if it's touching, you can expect shorten life. This element will burn out prematurely. It will also not burn and fire as efficiently because you're expecting you know, fuel to be sprayed into the pre-chamber and will surround the glow plug and ignite. If you have a bunch of carbon in there, that prevents the engine from starting efficiently, also causes rough idle when the engine is cold, okay? So this, you can compare our reamer, see? The reamer goes into the, in the same position, bottoms out in the same location as the glow plug, and when you rotate this into the head and turn it, you're going to collect all the carbon, all the carbon buildup. I recommend just coating this with some super sticky grease as you put it in and turn it because that will minimize the amount of carbon that, that drops down into the pre-chamber. And then as far as uh, 
anti-seize compound, I highly recommend you use this high-grade copper-based anti-seize. And once again, when you're applying anti-seize, so don't, don't, don't get so much on it that it's going to get down here on the, on the tip of the glow plug. You, you only need a very small amount of anti-seize right on the threads. And just work it into the threads like this. You see, you don't, you just, any excess you can just wipe off with a brush. And there, now if you install this plug into the head in this manner and you don't leave it in there for 10 years, I, I would recommend every 30, 40,000 miles on these engines that you remove the, the glow plugs to inspect them and also to clean out the carbon. And this will also prevent the problem of them sticking in the cylinder heads because if you break one of these off, it's going to be very expensive to repair. If you're watching this video because you have one of these cars and you're having a hard time getting one of the glow plugs out, uh, let me share with you just a couple of tips. Number one, a lot of times it works better if the engine's warm. I mean, not so hot that you're going to burn yourself, okay? Use a little common sense here. But start the engine and let it get hot and just get, let, let it just cool down to the point where you can still work on the glow plugs and try to get it out at, at, at that point. Now you can also spray, try spraying um, some rust penetrant like PB blaster down in there. And then when you're working the glow plug, you know, don't force it. Don't just, don't just reef on it. What you want to do is feel it. You kind of back it out a little bit and then move it forward a little bit. And then back it out a little bit more and then move it forward a little bit more. Maybe do that three or four times and you get it worked out a little bit and then spray some more penetrant down in there and then just keep rocking it back and forth each time rocking it a little more to the left so that you're gradually working it out and hopefully that's going to prevent breaking the gold plug off. It, it could also prevent ruining the threads in the aluminum head. So uh, if, if this is happening to you, just use extreme caution and, and try those tricks. Now, if you plan to do this work yourself, we have, um, we sell this reamer separately on my website. Uh, we're very proud of this. We think it's the best reamer available anywhere because we use a high quality steel housing, no aluminum, no aluminum in this reamer and a very high quality reamer. So this is a, an ex a tool that you should have if you own one of these cars, okay? Anytime you're changing glow plugs, you want to ream out the carbon. And then we do sell, we do sell these glow plugs for these models in, in packs of six, and we include the reamer. If you want to save a little bit, um, I, can, I can discount a little bit as a package. What we do in our packages on these glow plugs is we include the reamer, and a small container of, of the correct type of anesthesia. I know there's a lot of anesthesia out there, different opinions on this, but I feel this is the best and you don't need to go out and buy a, you know, a 10 or $15 tube of it either. You don't need very much. So we package it in these little half ounce containers and uh, we'll include an acid brush in the kit. So if you're looking for these type of glow plugs for your E300 or you want to check out our reamer. I'm just going to put links below in the description of this video. You have to click on the show more, the show more part, and that'll take you to the links of these products on my website. If you, if you want to learn more about diesels, be sure and go to my website. We really specialize in diesel Mercedes passenger cars. And be sure and subscribe to my channel. Anytime we come out with a new video that's related to diesel engines, you'll be sure and get notification.